I'm your host, Lori Creever. Today's program, we are joined by Joy Kuby. She's written a wonderful book, a collection of stories. It's called The Fortunate Four and Other Journeys of the Heart. I'd like to read something from The Fortunate Four that we talked about a few minutes ago. Sure. Annette had such an interesting way of, of writing in the journal. And actually, Betty was a poet. She was a published poet. OK. And I didn't get a chance to see her journal, which would have been fun. Mm -hmm. But um, I really enjoyed how Annette wrote, too. And this is, I'll just read a short little clip. Because uh, so much of them, part of their life was, they were so appreciative of what they had been given. Yes. So this is her um, uh, talking about what she was grateful for. And this was actually towards the end of their trip. They were in, this is in August. They were staying with one of the families in the Catskill Mountains that they had a letter of introduction mm -hmm. to. So they're staying with the Fowlers in their cottage in Twilight Park. So this is what she says. Um, all of us went to the Union Church, which was a beautiful, rustic church in the heart of Twilight Park. The minister preached a sermon on gratitude. It made me think of how grateful I should be for the life and friends and the blessed opportunities that come my way. As the trip, for example, my prayer each night, brief and simple as it is. This was her prayer. Oh, dear God, make me truly appreciative of all I have to enjoy and help me to understand the rest. It's, a lo it's lovely to find oneself here in this peaceful, serene, and beautiful quiet of the Catskills, to drink in the kindness and hospitality of the followers. I th our thanks to Mr. Drew and the four letters of introduction he gave us, which helped us to enrich our trip and with new friends. And they stayed for dinner, and then they had to leave after church, and they went on their way to the next part of the journey. Mm -hmm. I, just was, I just thought it was wonderful how they didn't expect it or take anything for granted. They just appreciated and were filled with gratitude what they were given. Mm -hmm. And all four of them had went on to live really um, blessed lives afterwards, filled with adventure. And I think it, they were always grateful mm -hmm. for the experiences that they were given. Mm -hmm. And I think this trip went on to change the people that they were to become. Absolutely. In the back of the chapter of this story, I then include what happens to them after this trip. And a lot of the readers say, oh, I'm so glad that you included what happened. What, what happened is the rest after, of the story? Right, what exactly. It would be such a mystery otherwise. Yes. Let's talk about yes. the young women um, and the Lake Street Bridge. Oh, yes. And the dreams. Yes, that was a fun story, too. Uh, they had all passed away, so I wasn't able to interview them. But I was so intrigued by this uh, story. How did the story come to you? There was... That was only the second one that I happened to see. I felt like a detective, always keeping my eyes open. But yes. there was a short little clip about these letters that were found when the Lake Street Bridge was being renovated. Okay. And these construction men found these letters. And I thought, oh, wow. It wow. should be fun to see what those letters were about. What were they encased in? That they, they put them in a jar. Okay. And they put the jar underneath by the bridge. And their plan was to go back in five years to see if all the dreams had come true. There were four young women that worked together. It was in the 1920s, and one was leaving to go to, on to a music career. So they mm -hmm. all got, four got together on a rainy day, had lunch, and then decided to write these letters to themselves. And they were on long scrolls, the actual letters, and then they had rolled them up and put them in this jar. So, the, and the letters were really intriguing, too, about their hopes and dreams for the future. Mm -hmm. Uh, one wanted to be a musician, yes. uh, and one was engaged to get married and was all in love and was hoping that she would always feel the same way about her husband to yes. be. And they just and they described what they were wearing, um, walked down to the bridge and buried these letters, and then they were there for 65 letter years. So I tell in the, in the story what happened as to why they were there so long and the little snippets that I could find out about their lives afterwards. Yes, you would have had to do some detective work. Right. Based on their maiden names right. as young women. And, and actually, I had a tea this summer. I thought of this letter. I had a tea for my close friends for their thanks in supporting me while I was working on the book. Yes. And after the tea, I gave them blue stationery of the envelope, and I said, I'd like you to do the same thing. Reread this story, and then write your dreams about how you want your life to be five years from now, and then they gave them to me, and 
um, I'm going to keep them all. In five years, we'll get together and and um, see if our dreams came true. Oh, so I did the same thing. Wonderful. Too. Wonderful. So it was really fun. It was a really special day mm -hmm. to do that. I know, Joy, that you have been visiting with some book clubs. What yes, are some of so the, much fun. Yeah, some of the, the sharing that happens there, lessons what, learned? What's been fun is the different age groups that have uh, kind of embraced this book. It's not just for people that, are, that lived in this era, but women, that, young mothers, mm -hmm. women in their 20s, 30s, 40s, baby boomers, mm -hmm. the group I fit into. Everybody has kind of enjoyed experience it from their own perspective of how different it is from their journey. Yeah. Um, and I had one group, uh, one uh, book club that was a combination of some mothers and daughters. So there were some women that were in their 70s or 80s. Mm -hmm. And then there was probably between 30 and 70 was the age group. Mm -hmm. And we had this wonderful time. Uh, two of the older women ended up sharing some of their stories and some of the life's, uh, fam family secrets that mm -hmm. came up. And it was just this wonderful bonding feeling. And I've met so many, so many wonderful, spirited women that a lot of times their group is kind of formed around the friendship of, of food and cooking. Yes. They might have a uh, dinner together. The one that I was talking about, actually her husband, the host's husband, is a really good cook. So when she hosts the meal, he would cook the dinner and then another member of the club came that evening as a butler in his butler's outfit, oh. and, and he uh, served the food to us. Uh -huh. So it was a really fun night. <laughs> so I thought, that's the way it should be. The men can get in the kitchen, cook, and we can discuss the book. <laughs> right. Well, that's really nice fellowship. Yes. Now, as, as an artist and mm -hmm. now an author, what is next for you? You know, I had some people that had said, uh, is your next gonna book going to be about men? Are you going to interview men for your next mm -hmm. one? Which I am working on a second book. And I mm -hmm. said, no, you know, I think women are a little bit behind. We still have a lot of catching up to do. There's been a lot written in the history about men. Mm -hmm. But I think we still need to do some more writing about women. Mm -hmm. so. Before you started this, did you have a particular curiosity or interest in the World War II era and what transpired after that? I always felt like anything before 1950 was a total mystery to me. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of curious about the everything mm -hmm. that, and the order that things happened. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I learned so much from interviewing these women about, um, like the tuberculosis phase yeah. and the effect the depression had on mm -hmm. them. One woman wanted to be um, aeronautical engineer, mm -hmm. Arlene. And so she started going through training. She was flying airplanes. And then the men came back in the middle of her training. And of course, then they took all the jobs and she just went, got displaced. Just yeah. went down another avenue. She loved competitive diving also. She was real outgoing and adventurous. So she got into <laughs> judging competitive diving. Totally Wonderful. different path. But her life was affected by the war ending and the men coming home. Sure. So just the different sacrifices they had to make. Um, but yet, I think the greater sense of freedom that they had, too, mm -hmm. in that era. Mm -hmm. uh, the fears that they didn't have that we have today. Yes. So it was, it was just a really, I thought even if it never became a book or one, sold it, one copy sold, the whole experience for me was, was just such a valuable experience. And a lot of these women have gotten to be really good friends. And I think it's fun to have women that are all different age groups as your friends. Yes. It's kind of a growing, I don't know what it is, it just helps you grow, I think. Yes, I See agree. See things from different perspectives. I agree with you, and I really enjoyed the book, and I yeah. also did find that it gave me some very um, first-hand lessons about mm -hmm. some critical parts of our American history mm -hmm. and what life was like here in Minnesota. I appreciated mm -hmm. that, so thank you. And it's a book about friendships, and mm -hmm. I always think of if somebody was... Um, some that enjoyed the movie, like the Yaya Sisters or mm -hmm. the Notebook by Nicholas Sparks, to me it had the same feeling of these bond between women. And I think we all need to support each other and lifelong friendships and love stories. Everybody needs a good love story, especially yes. today. Exactly. And there's, going on. There are many in this Many book. wonderful love stories in here. Yes. Well, thank yes. you very much for coming well, on thank you to for the having program. Thank you for having me here, Laurie. 
The book, again, that we've been discussing is The Fortunate Four and Other Journeys of the Heart, and that's by Joy QB. This is Lori Creever signing off from another edition of 30 Minutes with the Author, inviting you to read a book. It could change your life. And let's encourage our children to do the same. Until next time. Yeah.